Okay, James, while we're preparing your proposal, I wanted to go over something with you that most of my customers really appreciate, all right? Um, it's basically how to pay for a car, okay? Now, our first choice would be you don't pay for the car. However, we'd have to arrest you if you didn't pay for the car, because that, that, that would have meant you stole it. So, I'm going to go through the three different ways that people pay for cars, the advantages and disadvantages of each, and quite frankly, it's a personal preference. So, I just give you this information. By the way, pay no attention to these numbers. As you can see, this is almost $5,000 more than the car you're buying is. So, don't pay attention to the numbers as much as you do the concept. Fair enough? Okay. Okay. Let's go through way number one, okay? Cash, because it's the simplest. $40,000 car. All right? Um, $2,600 tax. State of Georgia, build roads, build uh, schools. So basically you're uh, being bounced, but actually this is even wrong, it would be 42600 And this question mark right here, this is called the lease end value or the guaranteed future value of a car. When you buy a car, there is no guaranteed future value. You are subject to market risk, okay? Um, pay cash, traditional financing, same thing. You'll see in just a second. So at the end, so the, the bottom line is you give up all of your cash and you miss using it for three years, whether it be stocks, bonds, or certificates of deposit. You do own the vehicle, but you own a depreciating asset and an asset that will be more expensive to maintain as time passes. How do I know that? Well, the experts at J.D. Power tell us that the best miles of a car's life are 1 through 30,000. Then after that, the price of poker goes up. Forgetting, just for a second, any repairs that are necessary after the warranty runs out, you're still going to have to deal with tires, alignment, shocks, tune-ups, brakes, mufflers, batteries, hoses, belts, towing, uh, I'm sorry, timing chains, etc. So basically, J.D. Power says, allocate another 75 bucks a month, or in this particular case, $75 a month, to owning that car. But you know what? For some people, that's the best way to do it. Now let's look at traditional financing. Same price. Now you've got an initial investment. You've got a balance of $39,000. you are still paying all the tax, $2,600. Your balance of finance is $41,600. You still don't know what the car is going to be worth at any particular point in the future. Your monthly payment is $793. At the end of 36 months, what you've got is possibly negative equity, because we don't know what the car is going to be worth. You definitely own something. You own an obligation to pay $19,000 more. That's 24 times 793. And then again, J.D. Power says, well, not only do you own the right to pay 19 more grand, but the cost of poker is going up. And I guess the question is, is there a better way to do this? And only you can answer it. Here's the alternative way. Same price, same amount down, everything stays the same right to here, but you notice your first big break comes right here. You pay $2,500 less in sales tax. Now, you're going to pay some more tax, don't worry, but the state of Georgia only charges you for the portion of the car that you're going to use. So they charge you on a monthly basis. Now, $22,400. American Honda will actually guarantee the future value of this vehicle. They're going to tell you that three years from now, we'll pay you. $22,400 for that car. Or you can buy it for $22,400. It's a guaranteed future value, also known as lease end value. Now, some other dynamics take place. First of all, the payment is $627, which is $584 plus, remember I told you the tax comes back in, $35 a month in tax. So, at the end of 36 months, first of all, you haven't spent all your money on the car. Second of all, you've got $6,200 more in your pocket than this cat over here because their payments were higher. And people sometimes say, well, gee, it doesn't look like you own anything. Well, by the way, the only time you own something is if you give them $41,600 up front, okay? Because this cat doesn't own anything either, does he? Here's what you own, this particular individual. you got $6,200 in your pocket. You own four options. If you decide it's the greatest car you've ever driven in your life and you cannot part with it, take the 6200 apply it to this price and finance the other 16000 which by the way would be $3,000 less than this guy's got to go. Okay? All right? If, if that's what you want to do. Now, um, if you just want to jump into a 2016 or 2017, hand us the keys back. All right? Um, if it turns out it's only worth $19,000. 
hand us the keys back. Honda eats the loss. You've avoided the market risk. If it turns out it's worth $25,000, well, you avoided the risk, but now you get to capitalize because you have the option of trading it or selling it. Okay? And if you just don't know what you want to do, extend the lease for a few more months. Take time to think. Basically, it's you control ownership without the market risk. It improves your cash flow. It's the best of both worlds. Now, look at all three of those. Which one makes the most sense to you? The lease makes pretty good sense. Great. Well, you know what? When we bring the numbers out, we'll show you show it to you both ways so you can make the call. Fair enough? Fair. Boom. That's it.